Welcome back for another video. Today, we're going to be talking about fantasy football. It's that time of the year, fantasy drafts to start happening. And right now, I want to talk about fantasy football and just what is fantasy football. If you're new to fantasy football, let's talk about what it is. Fantasy football is an alternative way for fans to enjoy the NFL, right? You get to draft real players and their real stats impact how well your team is going to do from week to week, right? So where do you start with fantasy football? First, of course, you have to get a group of people. You can join a random draft or you can get friends or people uh, to group up and have a draft. And there are different types of draft. You can do a standard draft, which is just like the NFL. You know, if you have the first pick in the first round, you have the first pick in the second round and so on and so forth. There's a snake draft where if you have the first pick in the first round, you end up with the last pick in the second round. But if you have the last pick in the first round, you end up with the first pick in the second round. And then as the draft goes on, you know, the person with the last pick in the second round, then again, you have the first pick in the third round again. It keeps going like that as the draft goes on, which is how most people do draft. That's uh, for for future reference um, and for a beginner, you should know most people do snake drafts. That's just the way uh, fantasy football generally is. And then the last type of draft that you can do is an auction draft which I honestly, I have never done an auction draft. I just know what they are. You know, nobody has any set draft position. It's just when it's round one, pick one, everybody puts a bid in on a player, highest bidder. By the time the time runs out, they get that player. And then it keeps going like that for the draft. Of course, everybody has a certain set amount of money going into the draft and, and everybody, you buy your team that way. Okay, and once you draft your team, right, you look at roster construction. Right, and as you go into drafts, you're going to need to know how does your roster need to be structured? What do you need to draft? You know, typically in ESPN leagues, a lot of, you know, generally people are using ESPN for redraft leagues. And if you're using the ESPN app or most fantasy apps, it's going to be one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex position, which can be either a tight end, a running back, or a wide receiver. And then a defense, special teams, and a kicker. Now, somebody who's been a fantasy league owner for, for many years at this point, my league is actually a two-quarterback league um, with two running backs, three wide receivers. We don't really use a tight end, but we have uh, an extra slot for wide receiver or tight end, right? And then the flex spot, we don't have a kicker, but we use defenses. Um, You can also add... Bench spots, I believe most leagues have uh, eight or nine bench spots, typically don't have an IR spot. My league uh, has 10 bench spots and two IR slots. So that's your typical roster construction. Usually the max on the number of players you're going to be able to get is going to be somewhere between like running backs and wide receivers, usually set between six and eight. You can't just stack your entire roster with a bunch of running backs. You know what I mean? I mean you can't. It's a good number of running backs to have, um, but you can't just draft, you know, 10 running backs on your team so you can keep filtering them out. Now, standard scoring is a good thing for beginners to do. If you're going in, go ahead and do standard just so you can kind of get a feel for how fantasy football is. How does the scoring work? How is everything valued in, in fantasy football? You know, quarterbacks, every passing yard is – 0 0.04. So what does that mean? That means every 25 yards is one point for a quarterback. Every touchdown a quarterback throws is worth four points. Every interception. I believe in regular leagues, interceptions and fumbles might be minus two points. In my league, they're minus one. Uh, Two-point passing conversions are worth two points. And then you there are set bonuses in different leagues for 300 plus yards or 400 plus yards, 500 plus yards. You can set different bonuses, um, but that's not guaranteed in every league. Right? And then you look at running backs and wide receivers and their scoring. Every 10 yards for them is one point. Every touchdown they score is worth six points. And then the same thing with them and the bonuses. If they go over 100 yards, they can get a bonus, 200 yards, so on and so forth for a certain number. And again, that's not guaranteed in every league. I have those set in my league. I don't use all the bonuses, but I use some. And with that, that's really it. You know, it's pretty, pretty basic. You know, yards and touchdowns is, is really what it comes down to in standard scoring. And you look at defense and special teams. You know, you get 
points if your defense is getting interceptions. It's just, you know two points when you get turnovers for your defense. If there's you know pick six or a kick return or a punt return, then your defense special teams will get six points for that. There's also points for z if your defense held the opponent to zero points or you know uh, I believe it's one to six, seven to thirteen, so on and so forth as you go. So defense actually pr plays a pretty vital part. You can't just have any defense in there. You want a defense that can create turnovers. You want a defense that, that keeps opponents' scores pretty low. And one thing to remember is that if the Colts are playing the Titans and you just so happen to have the Colts' defense, but Anthony Richardson throws a pick six, the points that are being led up by the Colts' offense will affect that defense. There's no way uh, for the fantasy app to separate those points from the offense to the defense. So that's just something to note so you're not surprised by it as you go in. Now, the other and more popular way of keeping a score in fantasy football is PPR, which stands for points per reception. Now, the only difference with this is that, you know, it's the same thing as standard scoring, but you get points for catches. So running backs, receivers, tight ends, even quarterbacks, if there's a, a wild play and a quarterback gets a reception. Whoever catches the ball, they will get a point in fantasy for every catch. Or some leagues do half point PPR where they get half a point for every reception. You know, you can set it differently, but standard PPR is one point for every catch the player gets, which is the most popular way. That's the way the leagues that I'm in run. Um, every league I do is PPR, um, and and that's that's just the way it is. You know, hey, that it adds an extra element, especially to running backs. Um, makes running backs a lot more valuable. Makes tight ends a lot more valuable, and some receivers that get incredible volume are more valuable because of it. So PPR kind of changes the game. But again, I would start. And I did start my fantasy life with standard scoring, waited till I was comfortable with that and felt good with that, and then moved on to PPR. Now, the, there are different types of leagues that you can get into. You already heard me refer to redraft leagues. Now, redraft leagues are exactly what it sounds like. Those are leagues that from year to year, you're redrafting your entire team. It's a fresh start every single year. It's not a commitment from year to year. You don't have to come back to the team and do the draft again, you could do it at your discretion, right? If you go further than that, it's a keeper league, which is the same thing. It's from year to year. You don't have to come back to it, but there's in a keeper league, you have a set number of players that you keep from the previous year, right? And if you're an owner and you decide you didn't want to do a keeper league anymore, the players that you had to keep would just be put back into the player pool for the draft in the next season. Like it's not a big deal. You don't have to commit back to it like that. Generally, if you're in a league with people, you know, you're going to want to commit to it. That's, just, you know, gentlemen's agreement kind of thing, but it's a year to year league. But then you have dynasty leagues, which is an endless commitment. You know, if you give up on this, league managers are going to have to find somebody that's going to take over your whole team. You can't just redraft your whole team. I guess you could, but that would mess a lot of things up for a dynasty league. Because in a dynasty league, you're drafting a team, you're managing that team through the NFL season like a normal team. But then after the league season ends, that is still your team. You go into that offseason with the same team with draft picks for the name for the next season. And every year you're going to do a rookie draft for the new rookies coming in. Typically what is a three round draft every single year. So this is again, endless commitment. This is like this closest thing to being an NFL GM that us NFL fans are going to have. It's to draft a fantasy team and to be able to manage that fantasy team through the season, through the offseason. You have your draft picks. You can make trades using players and draft picks like Dynasty. I have never done Dynasty. I will be doing Dynasty this year. I can't wait to get into it. I have friends that have done it. I've heard so many people on different podcasts talk about it. Sounds like a great time, something great to get into for people that have any interest in fantasy football year after year or have interest in being an NFL GM. This is the best of both worlds. I am into this. I would not blame you if you want to be into this, but as a beginner, again, I would start with standard scoring, redraft leagues, 
get used to that, then do some PPR scoring. You know, if you wanted to skip standard and go straight to PPR, I wouldn't blame you there either, especially with the way things are now. So many people are doing fantasy football. So I wouldn't blame you for starting with PPR scoring, but wait to go into Dynasty until you understand fantasy and the different ways of fantasy. You know, all the different bonuses you can get. Maybe do, you know, you you can go on DraftKings and they have during the football season, they'll have free daily fantasy lineups that you can make every single week for free. You don't have to pay for it, but you can see how different scoring works because they have different bonuses that, that they add on DraftKings. You can kind of see a different way of scoring and different lineup settings because on DraftKings, they also have three wide receivers, right? So it's different roster construction. You can kind of get a feel for how things work and then move into Dynasty. So this has been... Fantasy football for beginners. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I love talking about football. I love talking about fantasy football. And this is the time of year to be in it. I am deeply enthralled into this stuff every day right now and trying to figure out who I'm drafting this season. So please, any questions, feel free to drop them down below and let's talk about it. We're going to have more fantasy football content coming out. So don't forget to subscribe and keep coming back for more off-season content. And I'll see you for the next video.